Hey friends, this is another Not Part of Your Scene podcast. My name is Chris Sarda. You can find me at Chris Sarda on Twitter or at Not Part of Your Scene on Instagram. So this is another previews issue where basically I just get to talk about comic books that are coming out. I am still on the April previews issue uh, with The Wicked Divine on one side and Blade Runner 2019 on the other side. This is uh, April for June releases. We have already done... The great thing about these podcasts, they stay relevant for uh, for two months, right? So we've already done uh, Marvel. We've already done DC. We've already done the big indies. And now we're going to do something that's uh, you know quite a bit less popular, which is what they like to call the back half, the green pages, however you want to call it, whatever you want to, whatever you want to label it. This is actually probably my favorite part. Now, definitely there's more people to talk about for Marvel and all that kind of thing and DC, but I think that there's more interesting stuff going on in the back half and in the, you know, in the big indies too. So we're just going to, we're going to start here and, um, and get through that. And then next week we'll, uh, we'll repeat, we'll either get a, a Marvel or DC previews out. That'll be, um, May for July releases. So it'll be the May previews for books that are releasing in July. Um, but for now, let's just uh, get through th- through some of the Cindy's. And this is also the thickest section, so I might um, be going quick in some parts. I'm starting at page 234, Welcome to Pride Month, uh, Representation Matters. So, you know, they're focusing on um, uh, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, and asexual communities. Uh, I don't know a lot about that world, but um, I am happy that we're just not crushing those people anymore or or using slurs to describe them. Um, Another thing I'll say is that when I look at this page on 234 and 235, I don't really read anything. I have a lot of respect for Strangers in Paradise, but I never got into it. Alters is something that's been on my radar. I don't know, though, if these books are written by people in the LGBT plus Q plus uh, group or if they just feature them, you know, but um, and a lot of this maybe isn't even my thing. You know, some of it I would just not read like Jane Jane's World or Zodiac Force that I see here. Um, The Fuck Off Squad. That that sounds pretty cool to me. Heathen. uh, Of course, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, Motor Crush sounds cool. So a few of them look cool. Bingo Love um, is a uh, a writer I like. I think it's, I can't remember now if it's Teeny Howard or, or it's T. Franklin. So that's a writer I really like. Um, I just haven't read her Bingo Love issue or her Bingo Love book. Um, and Gumballs look pretty cool too. So I'm actually pretty, you know, as far as grabbing things at random, I I, I don't read just about any of those. Um, flipping the page. Now we'll go over a couple other things, especially pointing out something that I'm surprised is in the Pride Month, has a little Pride Month mark. Uh, on page 236, uh, uh, Cerberus, Volume 5, Jocko Story Trade Paperback. So remastered edition, whatever that means. Um, 40 bucks. It's pretty big. It's almost 500 pages. You know, Cerberus is that thing that I don't really read, but I see it in dollar bins, so I'll grab it every now and then. But um, some of these repackaged books actually look pretty cool to me, to be honest. Uh, they're just These happen to be very expensive. Um, right next to it, Essential Items, you see all the Cerberus um, uh, trade paperbacks, so Volume 1, 2, 3, and 4, all available. They all look like they're all right around you know, 500, 600 pages. So there's good value there if you were really into uh, reading that. Uh, it's def- definitely something that could definitely be considered a classic. I remember even in the 90s, it was already considered um, one of Dave Sims' classics. So it's something I just sort of pick up. Um, I was introduced to Cerberus through, I think it was Spawn number seven or eight. Still have that issue. But um, yeah, so uh, that looks cool. I'm going to flip through, even though like Banjack sounds cool, I'm going to flip through some of this, um, especially if I'm not buying it. Uh, Null Fairies, so my only problem with that, that looks cool to me, like something I might uh, think is is okay, and it's not too egregious as far as uh, the sexualization, but it's already at number six, so it'd be tough to 
sort of know what's going on. I guess this could be the beginning. So it's a stunning climax for her, 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 her adventure. So I like the sort of high fantasy stuff too, as you know, either the real stylized space operas, high fantasy. Um, Reading-wise, I like the high science fiction, but I think that the space opera stylized stuff works great for um, uh, for comics. Uh, and then a bunch of like zombie tramp stuff. That, all that stuff is easy for me to jump by. Uh, I will point out the no ones is um, something that looked very cool. Now it's another, it's another post superhero, and this appears a couple times in the in the back in the green pages for whatever reason. It's another post superhero thing. Um, I think that this is pretty much sums it up, uh, so you know what you're getting. Uh, has the so Norwegian artist Wellbees illustration has the dark brooding of a Bergman film. This is Umbrella Academy with the West Anderson turned down and David Simon's The Wire turned up. So just, uh, it's the post superhero thing, except it's going to be probably a little bit more dark, uh, a little bit less embracing the campiness, uh, but it still looked cool to me. Um, shock is, uh, not something I was going to get. It's sort of, looks like a hardcover with a bunch of, um, individual stories. If you hear me talking enough about comics, you know, I really don't like like the short eight page stuff. Detective Comics 1000 was terrible to me. Um, the, the Star Wars books, um, those are one shots, but they have those specials. Actually, the one for Age of Republic was actually pretty good, to be honest. Um, I should do a, probably a review on that. But um, there's just a lot to, it's just a lot to develop, and, and you're telling a story with words. You want to, like, have the space to do it, too, you know? Uh, Trustfall. So Aftershock, by the way, is something I would always think would be in the bigger indies, but I, I guess they're not. So Trustfall is coming out. It's Christopher Sabella. I think he's going to be most important to people for his work on Crowded, but he's also done Hard Amok, which is uh, from Aftershock. A couple other things. To tell you the truth, I haven't really read them. I am interested in this. Uh, the problem is, and I support comics and go to your local comic shop and, and we want everyone, you know, artists and writers to make money and whatnot, but so many Aftershock comics appear in the dollar bins. So, I mean, it's hard to like jump on this except for maybe issue number ones or something. And then I feel like you're going to see a lot of the other stuff, uh, in the dollar bins. And that might just be what I have to do with Aftershock. Cause I enjoy the stories a lot, but I mean, as many as they print, dropping four nine four bucks, four and change on each one of them is tough. So dark red on page two forty eight is one that I'm doing that on, and you know it's been good. It's going to be at number four. Tim Seeley's the writer. Corin Howell is is doing the art. Mark Englert is the colorist. That's been good. But how long am I going to stay with it? Four bucks, four bucks, four bucks. And a new one I'm going to pick up is Killer Groove number two. That one is, um, as you know, anything that like overlaps between music and stuff, I want to read it and talk about it. Uh, but, you know, Aftershock's just that company that is, you know, it seems like it's ever present, but nothing's hit well enough that, you know, it's, it's, it's gone crazy and you just see stuff in the dollar bins. Like I just, start, you start to see them there. So I have to be careful. So animosity on page two fifty fifty is something I really enjoy. I'm only on the second trade though, so I'm not reading it in uh, you know new issues. Stronghold I am though. I've been buying Stronghold and that's good, but we'll see how long I go on that. And then uh, Oberon will be on number five in June. That's been really good, um, sort of fantasy, but less fantasy like Tolkien and more fantasy like Shakespeare. I mean, if you know anything about Shakespeare, there's Oberon, right? So it's, it has a re very Midsummer Night's Dream feel. Uh, Orphan Age, I bought number one, but I think I'm going to hold off on that. Either buy it and trade, unless I'm su I didn't haven't read it yet, unless I'm super into the first issue, or just wait to see where it ends up in a year or two, you know. Um, but Aftershock is still one of my favorites, so it's hard to sort of um, shrug that one off. Um, so a couple other things here at 254, we're in Ahoy comics, you know, what I've read from Ahoy, I've liked, I don't see anything here that sort of grabbed me. High heaven looked cool. Um, actually high heaven looks really cool. So, uh, the story of chronic malcontent, Dave Weathers, who dies and goes to heaven where everything is terrible and everyone hates a complainer, the savage satire. Uh, by Tom Payer. It features an entire five-issue series plus plus a script. I mean, that sounds interesting. 
Some of these sound interesting, but I, you know, I don't want to buy a trade. So, um, Bronze Age Boogie. So the that this is a really cool on page two fifty five, a very cool um, full page article for the Goon. Now people love love the Goon. I am unfamiliar with it. One day I'll read it. I'll probably try to go find some older stuff first before I read this uh, newer stuff. But um, I've only heard good things, and, and it seems to be in my wheelhouse. But I'm just a guy that never got into it. Um, so uh, on, so starting on page 256, <coughs> excuse me, and then going on to page 258 is all the Alterna comics. Now, I actually su subscribe directly to them. So I'm getting all of their stuff. Um, I really enjoy Alterna. I'm, you know, they, they, they release such a wide array of stuff that, you know, I, I probably won't love everything. Um, but it's just a, a, a group I want to support. You know, most comics are $1.50 at the most $2. You know, it, uh, in case you, I see why am I, in case you missed it, is, is 99 cents. So, I mean, they go all over the place. It's old newsprint. You know, and they seem seem to be down with the, um, you know, churn out some cool comics, see what see what see what sticks, that kind of thing. So, um, they're someone I buy everything from, just also because it's so cheap, and that, and I've already paid for it. So, you know, ba doop ba doop there. Um, Amigo Comics. Some of these look cool. I didn't see any number one start up, and I and I didn't get on the on board uh, for for Straight Jacket, which is in a volume two. Or gargantuan there, so we'll keep moving. The Princess of Venus, American mythology. I don't really have anything to say about those. Um, I did pick up Planet. I didn't. I I did decide for Rock Comics. I was going to pick up Planet Nine. Uh, it's a mini series, so I like that when I know I can just hop on and off. Uh, so mysterious planet on the far side of the galaxy has come back into Earth's view after a thousand years. Its visitors want our help in order to preserve their way of life, but their true motives will bring our very existence towards dark conclusions. That's as far as I'll go there. Uh, next to it is T-Mobile. That looked cool, but I didn't, I didn't jump on it. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, interesting stuff from Rock Comics. Sometimes they seem like they might be, uh, or, an, or I should say Antarctic Press. Rock Comics is an imprint of Antarctic Press. Um, you know, Antarctic Press seems to do... Uh, their own thing. They almost published that dudes, that comic skate guys, uh, comic, which I think I don't think I'd have minded a ton. Um, although I don't know how racist he's actually been. So I, I could easily have my mind changed on that, but I know that the comic wasn't like racist, but these Antarctic press has done some, you know, some edgy stuff. One thing I am, one thing I am getting from them is on page 265, exciting comics. Number three, uh, I think that it is a, it's a bunch of sh uh, short stories, but this is really a cover uh, by, it's a tribute to the evil empire raging against the machine uh, cover. So I got it for that reason. It's something that looked cool on my wall, I guess. I don't know. Um, let's see, where are we? So I have something on page 266 uh, circled. I have Stonebreaker graphic novel. So Apparently, I like this because I circled it. Peter Wartman returns to the wondrous city of of Noradun in Stonebreaker, the long-awaited sequel to Over the Wall. So, uh, I guess it looked cool enough for me to buy. I don't even remember reading that. I was probably super drunk when I read that, to be honest. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go to Archie Comics. So, this is one of those where, you know, I, I can't even say I don't get it because I haven't even really tried it. I can see just over the last year or two the way Archie's trying to do more than just be, you know, corny, the corny Archie I remember as a kid, right? There's a horror versions of it. Um, there looks like there's a little bit more a, a, adult teen Riverdale kind of thing, you know, throwbacks to 1941. So I like what they're doing. Um, it does seem to be a niche and one, one that hasn't really grabbed me and I'll probably fight against it grabbing me just because I'm trying to cut down on other things, right? Uh, let's see, 272 and 273, Soul Fire. So this is Aspen Comics, and this stuff feels like all the old Fathom Bad Girl stuff. Every cover has to have, um, you know, a beautiful woman on it. Things I don't mind looking at, but uh, I prefer the 
the way we're going as Avatar Press does here in with this stitched. It's what's even worse about this is it's either like a hot girl or a hot girl being maimed. In fact, some of them, it's like the same picture. Like if you look on 277 on Crossed, it's a hot girl in like some um, bikini contest. And then there's her heart being pulled out. So I don't know. In a different cover, you know. Um, yeah, a lot of this is weird, at least cover-wise. I don't know if the stories are good. Weird what rape fantasy stuff. So it's not stuff I'm super interested in. Um, but, uh, you know, there's another one. You know, from the other side of things, it does have a very, these, uh, these, if it was maybe 30% less, obviously gratuitous boobs, then to me, what it would be, if I take all these covers together, to me, what it would look like is, a uh, comic book version of, uh, old school, like nineties death metal, which, which I would prefer because stitched has stitched terror on page 298 has like the crazy horror violence and it's not necessarily on women, right? Of course, right next to it is a, a girl and her panties are showing. So, um, yeah, the other problem with that is like, is it good? I don't hear anyone telling me it's good. It seems like it's just made for a shock value, right? Where in death metal, especially early death metal, you know, Carcass and Napalm Death, they may have been, you know, they may have had covers like this and lyrics that were horror movie sort of gore lyrics, but then everything else was good. It was all quality, you know? So I don't know that that's the same thing with Stitched here. Um so next up, so we get the big splash page for Lady Mechanica, Sangre number one. I decided this is where I'm going to jump in on it. Uh, this is Joe Benitez's work. Uh, I will say that this is uh, one that got me because of Free Comic Book Day. So, you know, last year's Free Comic Book Day, there's a Lady Mechanica, and I, I went ahead and grabbed it. And um, I liked it. So, you know, I never got into it because there's, you know, it was in the middle of a story or I didn't notice. And so this time I happened to be flipping through and I got to see that we're starting in Sangre number one and they're going to the Spanish countryside to hunt a demonic creature, um, st uh, stalking the local Baron son. Ah, I'm all for it. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, let's see. So over here in the world of Black Mask Studios, um, something that looked pretty cool to me I didn't circle it as Space Riders, uh, Vortex of Darkness. You know, that that's that real stylized sort of um, sci-fi I like, space opera sci-fi, especially if it looks like this, you know, like a trip. They have a little preview here. Um, but I didn't circle it, probably in the sense that I'm going to cut back kind of thing, right? Where Labrador, I'm going to hop in on um, even if, because it's a sort of interesting little... Uh, way to look at things. Time to smash the lab and free the animals. There's no turning back now. Sort of curious to you know what they're what they're doing. Um, if it is just a explicit sort of PETA vegan thing, or if there's um, some actual like if it's just that kind of propaganda. If there's actual story characterization in it, you know people that care about animals and think of them a certain way. And if there's also any um, speculative stuff in it like is it just you know people or these animals I, so i have some questions for it you don't get to see very many things like labrador that um isn't explicitly propaganda so curious to see what that is and and to talk about it uh, i don't see anything militia number one by chuck dixon that looked okay but i don't think i was going to get it uh let's flip through i'm going to flip through the boundless and i've already talked about boobs and whatnot and that one is not even trying to be good um this I will talk. Well, I'm going to talk about boobs some more. I do love boobs and talking about them. I guess I'm talking about them not in that context, though. So. Uh, I just wanted to um, point out that this ter on page 292, this Tarot Witch of the Black Rose, Volume 1, by Jim Ballant, or Ballant, has the little Pride Month thing on it. So I don't think that Jim Ballant is, is gay or anyway. So this must be the character that's gay. So when I looked up why Tarot would be there, she's uh, you know doing lots of uh, making out with I think this girl that's on the cover with her, but it's definitely not like a. It's funny because you could put Pride Month on that, but it's it's definitely like lesbian porn that a straight guy would watch on 
Pornhub, right? That I just go look at in Pornhub. So um, I just think it was funny that just because it's hot girls with big boobs making out that it got the Pride Month stamp. I mean, I guess it, technically it is. Technically it does, right? I don't know lesbians that look like that. So anyway, I mean, I don't know straight girls that look like that, to be honest. So I don't even, that wasn't even a, as a hit towards uh, just in general. Um, so we're going to jump past Bud's art books. I like art books, but you know, I'm a reader primarily and I like the stuff to tell a story. I like the art to actually tell a story. So I don't know how those art books really would look. I would flip through them and I would be, I'd be done. So anyway, uh, we see the no ones again. For some reason I circled brand. So the bastions are superheroes at the height of fame. No ones are by Jim Kruger and well be by the way. And Fortune, their brand has captured the world and corrupted their souls. When they accidentally kill a man and cover up the crime to save their reputation, their corruption becomes a curse that erases their very existence. I feel like you just told us about the whole series, probably. Um, I like the idea that these guys are a brand, that the no ones, that the superheroes are a brand, and and uh, how they have to live up to that. Uh, I am going to flip through page 296 and 297 you know all quiet on the rest western front hey go read the book before you read the comic you know reading books is cool too so you know i decided to do on page 300 i decided to go ahead and pick up boogly heads number one um so you know it's that cartoony arc but you know why not i'll take i'll take a look at it and if we jump over to page 302 um, I have no idea what I circled here. Oh, I just wanted to make a point of, so we're in like, um, a little bit of a, a manga area and I haven't been buying the manga mostly because I like manga and I enjoy it, but mostly it feels like a, you know, newspaper or something to read. So I feel like I'm better off just buying it. You know, it's black and white and this and that the stories are good, but I feel like I, I'm, I don't need to collect it as much. I can get it from the library. So I just wanted to point out um, Shigeru Mizuki's uh, History of Japan graphic novels. I, I got through about half of the first one, 1926 to 39, and I, I really enjoyed it. And actually, I think, actually, I finished that one. Maybe I got through half of the second one. So I really, really loved it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I read something else by Shigeru Mizuki. Uh, actually, it was about the war, too, so it may not have been this. And um, it's it's really good. There's, I would recommend getting that stuff. I'd recommend just finding, you know, just Googling the greats or people that are winning, like, the, the literary manga awards, not, like, the Dragon Ball Pokemon kind of awards, and checking it out because some stuff's really good. Inyo Asano has been amazing. Um, I can tell here that uh, the Yoshiro Tatsumi library, I can tell that those are going to be pretty good, and I haven't read... I haven't read shit from that. Oh, this is what I read. It's up here. Onward Towards Our Noble Deaths by Shigeru Mizuki. Also on page 302. So very good. Um, I even need to look up um, uh, Yoshihiro Tatsumi um, because those actually look like real good books too. So uh, definitely something to look into. I'm a library guy, so I just grabbed them from the library. On page 306... You know, if you're into the old EC stuff, I've never been super into it. I don't even think I would be buying it if it was, uh, you know, even if I was collecting old stuff. You know, I'd have to see it for cheap in like an antique store. I would grab it, but uh, not looking out for it. So now we're in Fantagraphic Books. This is, seems to be the area that wins a lot of awards but doesn't sell a lot of books. I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, I've always loved what I read. I think I went ahead and got Blubber down here, uh, number five. Uh, so they're already doing number five, but I'll be trying to get number two, three, four, uh, and five, and then find number one somewhere. Um, I think it looked interesting. The covers are very interesting. They're uh, the portrait covers. The physically enhanced humans take over now begins. XXX star Myla returns to join Corazon and Tiki Tik in a wild sex orgy with monsters. I guess that got me. Um, so... I like monster sex orgies. Why not? And it doesn't look like it's gratuitous. It looks like it's fantagraphic. So we'll see what it looks like. And I don't think any of these other ones grab me. The problem with these fantagraphics books is you either need to know the the cartoonist 
you know, or the writer cartoonist team, however it works out, or someone needs to tell you, uh, it's good essentially, you know, or someone needs to go, Hey, this is good. You should get it. This is going to win an award or this is nominated for award, you know? And some of it's just uh, way out of my price range. Like Kramer's or got 10. I read that solicit on page 308. It's 35 bucks though. You know, like, what are you going to do? It's, it's a little bit crazy. Um, let's flip through a little more. Uh, I circled, I circled this just cause it was news on page, uh, 312 Super Mario Brothers sells for a record price. So uh, a copy of Super Mario Brothers unopened and slabbed sold for over just over a hundred thousand dollars in a private transaction. Can you believe that? And it, it's just a rare game because if you guys remember the games to come with the Nintendo, so it was very rare to just see it in the box. Um, and it's like untouched, kind of it's pretty amazing to me. Um, Overstreet, I guess there's stuff that I would like in there, you know, about writing and talking about. Um, comics, but I, I've never held an Overstreet in my hand. I would prefer it to be a yearly comic book essay book, and that would probably grab me more than just a bunch of prices in it. Samurai Grandpa on page 317. I have a couple um, question marks by it, but I'm not super... It didn't really grab me. I was like, Source Point, I, li I like what I've... The little bit I've read from Source Point. So, you know, it. I saw it, but you know, I was whatever. So on page 319, this is something I would normally get, right? Heavy Metal Magazine. This is an Iron Maiden comic, but to be honest, and I know this is going to take away my metal card from a lot of you guys, I'm just not a big Iron Maiden fan. I think it's, I think they're all right. I'm just not a big like 80s metal, um, thrash guy or, or traditional metal. I'm just not, never been huge about it. I like the weird, the weird heavy stuff, you know? Um, let's flip through, prepare to be ignited, uh, Jin volume two from insight comics, uh, that didn't really grab me. We're only on K and this podcast is, I might have to think of how to do indie better, right? Uh, this podcast is already going very long. Um, now we're going to jump to lion forge at the end of your tether. Number one, another place, another time. So this one would be cool. Uh, I, I had it marked. I don't know if I actually, uh, actually bought it. The art looks a little sparse, no backgrounds and stuff like that. Rolled and told someone gave it to me for free one time. I haven't really done anything with it. Um, Lion Forge is someone I want, it's a company I've wanted to like support, but I just haven't seen anything that's really grabbed me or we're way too deep into the, into the series where, okay, I need to go look for, uh, I need to go look for graphic novels first. And let's jump around. Battle Cats look cool from Mad Cave Studios, but I left it alone. Rohan. So Oni Press, you know, these can be hit or miss. Little Witches didn't look good enough to me to grab. And then, um, but what did was Super Fun Sexy Times. So the art is, you know, these, this art is actually interesting. So the individual characters, they have like a cut out of them. Um, and they look like just cartooned, uh, you know, just regular cartoon, almost animation cells. But when you jump over to the preview, uh, the art style is actually very, very interesting. Um, very square, you know, polygonal. Not that there's not circles in there. Um, weird shots as far as, you know, if there was a camera, you know, so the perspective. So uh, I just wanted to mention it. It looked cool to me. And this is coming out as a graphic novel, 120 pages, but it's 1999. So um, let's see. Rick and Morty is always huge. Uh, something I decided to go look into was the they, them pronouns. So uh, I guess I'm celebrating pride with Oni Press. I don't actually know what they mean by that. They, them pronouns. Um, obviously, it has something to do with Pride Month, so we're going to check that out. Wet Moon. Let's see here. And, well, now we're getting through some stuff, right? Now, one of the things with the green pages is, is a lot of, like, original stuff or... Or new stuff. I guess they don't pay to get, you know, featured or something like that. And it's easy to get lost in it. Um, so I'll give you an example. Page 356 and 357. 
is is a good example of that because you have like PS art books and then things that you just don't really understand what you're looking at. 2080 June 2019 pack. I don't know what that is, you know. It's an, an anthology and then a bunch of trades and stuff. So you sort of wish that it was organized a little better so that, you know, something in here might be good and you're just going to completely, completely skip it. Like maybe you're into this RAM or REM or whatever it is, but I'm not. I probably just skipped it, to be honest. And we are almost done because I won't cover the manga. Uh, Rise. So in Scout Comics, I mentioned them earlier. Um, I've been trying to check out what uh, I can get from them. Rise was something that was uh, pretty good. It was just really wordy. Uh, and the letterer had to make things so small because the writer wrote so many words. So I want to see where that goes. I almost want to follow uh, uh, Don Aguillo to see what, what he does in the future, to see if he learns how to like let the art do its thing. Now, he, it looks like he's doing the art on this book too, and the art was just absolutely amazing. Like, hard work, lots of color, lots of stuff going on. There maybe was a little bit of problem with what the focus in each picture was, but um, just really beautiful overall. Then I think I'm getting crucified for sure on page 360. Uh, the world's deadliest contract killer just received his next target, a man some people believe to be the modern Jesus Christ. That's all I read of that. So that looked cool. Um, solar Flare, Star Bass, those look cool, but I mean, how much can, yeah, I've said it all the time, how much can you really buy, all right? So flipping through. Uh, so now we're going to get to some Titan stuff on page 368. Uh, Ryuko Le Cool um, by Eldo Yoshimizu and you know has a black I don't even know if that's going to be colored is that going to be colored nope it's black and white so um, this is sort of like the pencils you'd expect to see as far as the shading and stuff in American comics but obviously very anime like the characters faces and stuff are very anime um so famed Japanese artist Eldo Yoshimizu tells the bloody tale of a Yakuza princess. I mean, that's right in my wheelhouse. I don't know if I actually marked that, to be honest. Maybe because I'm not into hard case crime. I probably skipped over it. Um, the knight on page 370 looked cool, but it's something I'd probably check out from the, uh, from the library if it ever got there. Hey, another page bent. Page 372. Uh, Shades of Magic. Now, this was a... I got, like, through half of this book the actual book from V.E. Schwab, and it was a, a very cool, I just, one of those books I lost halfway halfway through, and I bought it on Kindle, and I haven't read it yet, so I got my eye on those, they might be very hard to find later on, um, definitely on the small print side of things, but I have my eye on them, I would like to read the books first, or at least, um, you know, in the order of that the books and the comics came out, I'm pretty sure about three of them came out before any book or any comic book came out. And um, then the, start getting to the Valiant stuff. Man, I'm starting to get caught up in the Valiant stuff. And I avoided it for so long, even though Matt Kint was writing it. Or Kint, or I don't know how to pronounce it. But um, uh, Forgotten, I forget what it's called. I didn't buy Punk Mamba, and I was planning to. So I'm glad I was able to skip that. Uh, but where are the two ones that grabbed me? They're not even here. Test... Tess looks cool, by the way. Jen Hickman. That's a Pride Month thing. She might be gay. Maybe the character in there is gay. I don't know. Uh, Heaven uh, looked very cool. And that's going to be a... Freya arrives at Odin's Keep to find all... So we got some uh, Norse mythology stuff. And man, I didn't see Forgotten Princess. And I didn't see the other one I'm reading from them. I may have just skipped it. And Xenoscope, those are easy for me to skip. It's pretty corny. Using, can't even make up their own characters using uh, characters in the public domain. And then we get into a bunch of manga, which I won't mention. Um, for a while on Instagram, I was doing a little show of uh, me getting introduced to manga, reading it slowly, just doing a little five to ten minute review on what I read. Um, so, you know, Golden Kamui, Inyo Asanyo, etc., etc., but I'm going to go ahead and, and skip the manga because I, I, I just don't know enough to comment on it. I'd recognize two or three things, and I'm not going to buy it, any of it um, anytime soon. So, hey, that was the back half. I just want to thank you guys for um, listening here. 
hopefully something cool is in there that you'll, you're going to go tell your, uh, your comic store to go pick up for you and put in your box. Those are the, I mean, no one makes, none of these writers are making a lot of money except for the top, top ones. Um, you know, but even in, even in the big two, they're not making a ton of money for this stuff. So, uh, you know, when you can support some of those very indie, you know, there's the big indies and then there's the very indies. So when you can support them, when something looks, and only support them, if it looks good to you, if it's something you think you enjoy, but don't let the marketing really bog you down because it's on seven pages and it gets a whole spread and, and stuff like that. Just, you know, learn about these authors and these artists and, and see what they're doing. The way I think of it is, look, a lot of it is as good as anything going on at Image or anything like that. But a lot of it is I consider it, okay, this is the minor leagues. This is when it's a lot of work to release a comic, you know, even especially monthly. It's just a ton of work to do it. Um, a lot of times they're doing it themselves or with very little help. So you almost get to see what they do with all this, like, annoyance and pain to, to get it out. And then eventually these writers will sign to image or dark horse or something, and they'll still make no money, but they'll be able to focus more on the writing or the art and stuff. So hey, just give them a chance. Something looks cool. Something's in your wheelhouse, you know, get it in your, get it in your box at your local comic shop. Anyway, this is Chris Sarda, not part of your scene previews podcast. Uh, again, at Chris Sarda on Twitter and at not part of your scene on Instagram. You guys have a great day. Thank you for watching.